Hello and welcome to Norwegian Woods. Today I'm going to talk about uh, a really important piece of the outdoors equipment and that's your car. How to maintain it and uh, prepare it for the winter. It is uh, one of the really important items uh, because uh, when you go out in the, in the wilderness you oftentimes park the car far away from uh, from other people and they have to rely on it and uh, there are certain things that you uh, have to have to do to uh, make sure that uh, the car behaves in a way that you want it to and when it gets really cold uh, things change quite a bit and uh, it puts a lot of demands on both the car and the driver and uh, I want to talk a little bit about this uh, subject in this video. In this uh, first part of the video, I want to talk a little bit about uh, preparations you can do to your car before you leave home. And you can also do this before the winter even starts, so the car is, uh, the car is ready for the winter conditions. And the first and probably the most important thing that you have to uh, take care of is the battery. You have to make sure that the, the battery is uh, operating uh, as good as it uh, absolutely can. And you have to make sure that the battery isn't too old. Batteries uh, last uh, something like uh, five years. Uh, if it gets older, you have to buy a new one. You also have to measure the, the voltage uh, the battery is uh, capable of uh, attaining. Uh, you also need to measure the acid levels and you also need to check the connection points to the, to the cables. It can be a really good idea to take them off and uh, clean them up with some sandpaper and maybe put a little bit of grease on them and uh, tighten them securely. That uh, can be uh, of great importance. The second thing that you can uh, do that's really important is to make sure that uh, you have good tires. Because uh, there's a big difference between uh, winter and summer tires. There are quite a few different uh, uh, kinds and categories of tires that you can uh, buy for your car. And uh, some of these uh, terrain tires, this uh, mud terrain and all terrain kind of tires, they can be really good in the summertime when it get uh, wet and uh, mushy conditions. But uh, when it gets slippery in the winter, uh, these kind of tires uh, <coughs> will not uh, do you much good. Because uh, good winter tires, they have uh, much softer rubber that doesn't get affected by the uh, by the temperature in the same way as the, the summer tires do. You can buy these uh, winter tires with studs, these uh, metal spikes, or without them. Uh, some people argue that the unstudded tires are just as good as uh, the studded. That can uh, possibly be true in some conditions. But when it gets really icy and really, really slippery, I believe that uh, this uh, studs is the only thing that can actually give you some traction. The tread pattern itself, it needs to be pretty deep. Here in Norway, uh, the government, uh, uh, they say that uh, these uh, treads had to be at least three millimeters deep. I think it's uh, really wise to uh, don't take it down that far. Maybe four or five millimeters is uh, is a good thing to uh, to aim for. And also, when you buy winter tires, of course, uh, tires are pretty specific to different cars, and uh, it's uh, in general a good idea to stick to the uh, to the tire dimensions that's uh, recommended for your car. But you also need to know that uh, when it gets really slippery, 
the wider the tire, the tire gets, the less traction you get. So it's really nice in the winter time to have really narrow tires. If you take a look at uh, tires they use for uh, uh, racing in uh, winter conditions on ice and uh, icy roads, you see that they are really, really narrow, almost like uh, uh, motorbike tires. There's also a few other things that you have to be mindful of. And uh, one thing is the cooling liquid in the engine. Uh, you need to make sure that there's enough uh, uh, defrost liquid in this uh, in this mix, so uh, uh, the cooling liquid doesn't uh, freeze in the engine or the radiator, because that can actually damage the engine pretty much completely. So you you measure this uh, liquid and you get a reading on what temperature it's uh, it's good for and you uh, mix in some more uh, antifreeze as uh, required, that's important. You also need to put in some uh, windshield cleaning liquid in the car that uh, doesn't freeze. If you use water it can uh, break the pump and uh, the system and it doesn't work and uh, in some conditions, in the winter time, you're really, really dependent on being able to clean your windshield because it's uh, it's uh, really getting dirty when you're driving behind other cars and you have this uh, slushy, uh, dirty snow thing that's uh, coming up on your windshield all the time. There's also this thing with uh, with fuel that you should be mindful of. It's always, uh, in the winter time, it's always good to, uh, to keep a full tank in your, uh, in your car with fuel. And there's a few reasons for this. Uh, of course, when it's cold, you really don't want to run out of fuel and stop in the middle of nowhere, because it can be dangerous. You can put yourself in a, in a dangerous situation. Uh, there's also a couple of other things. I want to mention about uh, keeping the, the fuel levels uh, as close to, to full as possible. Because when, when the levels drop, you uh, get all this air inside, and this air contains uh, moisture. And this can uh, condensate inside the walls of your uh, fuel tank and get into your fuel and make really big problems. It can even make uh, the car stop completely if you get enough of it. There's also this uh, thing, if you hit the ditch, you get stuck somewhere. It's really nice when it's cold to have uh, fuel so you can keep the engine running to get the, the heating system inside the car uh, going. Because uh, without the engine running, the car gets uh, really cold really quickly. Another thing you should uh, look out for is uh, damage to the windshield, windshield wipers and uh, the light bulbs because uh, you need to uh, have good visibility because in the winter time the, the days are shorter and you get uh, a lot more dirt up on your windshield so you need uh, light and uh, visibility. So check your light bulbs and your uh, wipers. You also need to uh, make sure that uh, the rubber seals around your doors and windows are uh, lubricated so they doesn't freeze up. Uh, this is particularly important when you decide to, to wash your car in the winter time. That you dry off all the water from these uh, seals and uh, you lubricate them. There's a few different uh, products out on the market that uh, can do this for you. And the same goes, goes for, the, for the locks. Uh, most cars have this uh, uh, remote controlled, uh, remote operated uh, central locking system, but this can fail. And uh, also, uh, uh, when, if the car runs out of uh, of uh, juice on the battery, 
this doesn't work. So you should be able to unlock uh, the car, car doors and importantly the fuel cap uh, even if the car is uh, out of power. So make sure you lubricate them. There are a couple of things I want to mention uh, specific to diesel or petrol engines that you should be mindful of. On diesel cars you need to make sure that the diesel filter is, uh, is good, that it doesn't contain water. That can be a really big problem in the winter time. And uh, for petrol engines, make sure that uh, the distributor is, uh, is running like a shell, uh, because you can get uh, moisture inside, which can cause corrosion. And this can uh, make the ignition system uh, malfunction. Uh, on petrol engines, you should also uh, check the connection points to the spark plug uh, LEDs. Uh, this can also uh, be clogged up with uh, corrosion and uh, uh, get you into trouble. There's another thing that uh, you should do before you depend on your car in the winter time. That's to uh, familiarize yourself with uh, the towing points, the attachment points for the towing ropes in front and the back of your car. Uh, there are some different uh, ways the manufacturers uh, make these uh, points and you should uh, know uh, the system that's uh, used on your car. In this uh, part of this uh, video, I want to talk a little bit about uh, solving problems and a little bit about uh, the extreme cold. Uh, the first thing, be mindful of where you park the car, because uh, if you have the car parked somewhere and there's some uh, snow cleaning, some uh, snow shoveling and going on in, uh, on that road uh, it can block your car inside in a way that you can't get it out and if it's uh, next to a, uh, a regular road and the snow sho shovel is driving past you uh, you get this uh, all this snow and small rocks and uh, slush everything that's uh, thrown off the road and can hit your car and break your windows and uh, mess up your paint and uh, <laughs> put your car into a pretty bad shape. So be mindful of where you actually park the car in uh, in, in the winter conditions. Uh, it's always uh, good to bring a little bit of uh, sand uh, uh, inside the car because uh, if you get uh, stuck you can uh, throw this uh, underneath the wheels and uh, give you some uh, traction. If you don't have uh, any of the sand with you, you can get some help from using uh, spruce boughs. Just cut off some uh, some branches from a spruce tree and try to uh, make yourself a little surface with a little bit more of traction. It can be uh, can be helpful to know that. Another problem you can run into is uh, frozen locks on your car. Uh, this can be easily solved if you have a little spray can with some uh, de-icing. You can buy this in, uh, in uh, gas stations. Uh, if you don't have that, you can use some uh, hot liquid if you have some uh, thermos uh, insulated bottle with some water, uh, hot water or coffee or something. You can pour this on, onto the lock and uh, make it uh, uh, de-ice enough so you can open it. I also heard people that's, uh, that have sa saved themselves by actually peeing on the on the lock and uh, the hot uh, uh, urine will actually melt the ice inside the lock so you can open it 
but all, all these kinds of, uh, of water uh, you pu pu pour into the, to the lock will actually make it even worse afterwards. But at least it can help you to uh, get, it, get out of a sticky situation. There's also one thing that can happen to your car uh, in the winter. I've had this problem with uh, a couple of older cars I've had. And that's the uh, motor, the starter motor that uh, kicks in and actually uh, winds up your engine so it's, uh, it starts running. This uh, starter motors has this, uh, it's a cylinder and it has this little uh, cylinder on top of it or on the side of it that has uh, a mechanism that actually makes the, uh, the starter motor connect to the flywheel of the engine and this can freeze up when, it's, when it gets cold so it doesn't uh, actually turn the engine and this can be sold sometimes if you have some uh, metal object like a hammer and you hit this little cylinder on top of the or the side of the uh, starter motor this can uh, loosen it up so it starts operating uh, it's it's a thing uh, that can be helpful most likely on newer cars you will not get into this uh, this problem but uh, it doesn't hurt to know it. Another little trick that can be uh, useful to know is uh, when it gets really cold uh, it can be a little bit uh, difficult to get uh, the temperature of the uh, engine to get high enough. And Under these circumstances it can be helpful to put some uh, sheet of cardboard or something like that in the front of the radiator to prevent uh, uh, the cold air to, uh, to hit, to hit uh, uh, the radiator and this can help you to get uh, to raise the temperature of the engine and it can also uh, help to give more heat from the from the heating system in the car uh, on, on newer cars I don't think this uh, probably is necessary, but uh, if you run into problems uh, with that uh, engine doesn't get uh, uh, warm enough, try to put something in front of the radiator. It's uh, it works. It can also uh, prevent uh, the engine from uh, cooling down enough uh, and get hot. So. Uh, don't do it unless you uh, think you absolutely need to do it. I also want to mention just a couple of things that can be uh, good to know if it gets extremely cold. And one of them is that you can, uh, if, if, if you're staying in, uh, in some kind of cabin or house, uh, you can uh, take out the battery and bring it in and keep it in the heat. That can uh, help preserve the power of the battery. You can also uh, drain the engine of the oil and uh, keep this in a bucket inside so it uh, doesn't uh, get uh, almost like uh, solid out in the cold. So when you're going to drive you just put in the battery and you pour in the, the motor oil. I've heard about people that uh, save them by doing that. Another thing that uh, I know uh, people have done is to uh, actually light a fire or put a camp camping stove underneath the, the engine. Uh, I probably wouldn't ad advise anyone to do that on uh, regular cars, but on bigger trucks and tractors it can uh, get uh, the car started. Of the motor started. I think the best advice uh, uh, to follow in extreme cold temperatures is just to keep the, the engine running continually uh, because then it, it, it stays warm and uh, the battery is charging and uh, everything is uh, running. 
the, the, the problems they actually start when you stop the engine and uh, it cools down and uh, everything starts to freeze up. I also think if uh, if you get into some problems when it's extremely cold and you don't have all this uh, uh, equipment uh, like uh, Arctic sleeping bags and stuff like this uh, I think it would be good advice to make yourself some kind of a snow cave or some other kind of shelter and sleep outside the car if you have to spend uh, spend the night out in uh, in the really really cold because the car gets really cold inside uh, I think that if it gets any any colder than uh, negative like 40 degrees uh, it's not really advisable to drive cars anyway you should probably drive snowmobiles or use a dog sled or something like that because cars are not meant to operate in uh, these extreme colds in this uh, last part of my video I want to uh, talk a little bit about uh, some kit you uh, want to bring when you're uh, driving car in the, in the winter. Uh, the first and one of the most important things you need is an ice scraper. You need to be able to clean the windows from, uh, from ice. Uh, the second item is some kind of a brush to take away snow. Uh, if you get some uh, snowfall, it's not a good idea to, to leave it on the car. You should clean uh, all of the car from snow, so bring some kind of brush to do that. I also think that uh, a flashlight, some kind of uh, battery operated flashlight is uh, uh, really uh, handy to have available if something happens uh, uh, in, in the winter time of course all year round but especially in the winter time uh, another thing that uh, I think you definitely should bring in Norway you have to have this available in the car is uh, a, a vest uh, with reflective uh, uh, materials on it so if you have to go outside the car and do stuff, change a tire or something like that, uh, other drivers can see you in the, in the dark. It's uh, it's really really important to have some kind of uh, way to make yourself visible. You also need to bring uh, some uh, some clothes, some extra clothes, some clothes that's uh, suitable for the temperature you're going to, to drive in. Because if something happens and have to walk, you need to have something. You need maybe like uh, a warm jacket, some uh, uh, gloves and uh, a wool hat, some warm shoes. Stuff that uh, makes you able to, uh, to move outside the car and, uh, and walk some distance without uh, getting into big trouble. I also think it's uh, really good uh, to bring some kind of a mobile phone. It's, uh, it can be crucial to be able to reach people if you get stuck or something happens. So uh, a mobile phone. This six items, the ice scraper, the snow brush, the flashlight, the reflective vest, some extra clothing and a mobile phone. That's uh, something you have to bring every time you, you travel out in, uh, in the winter time. There's also a few other items that can be really, really helpful to, to bring. Uh, especially if you're traveling uh, uh, a little bit longer distances uh, in uh, less populated areas. And one of them is uh, some kind of a snow shovel. You might get into a situation where you need to dig out the car. Uh, you can bring some kind of uh, shovel that's good for uh, hacking through ice. But usually these uh, shovels are a little bit 
too small to remove uh, larger amounts of, uh, of snow. So you have to, to make a decision what kind of, uh, of snow shovel you want to bring. But that's uh, one good uh, piece of kit to have in the car. You can also bring uh, some uh, uh, chains or uh, this, uh, the, I think they call them uh, uh, tire uh, socks. Tire chains or tire socks that you can put on uh, uh, the tires to get a little bit more uh, traction. That can help you out of uh, some sticky situations. You can also uh, benefit from uh, bringing some uh, jumper cables. Uh, this uh, jumper blocks with the battery uh, can be helpful, but uh, as I said earlier, they also get uh, affected by, uh, by cold weather, so they can be uh, drained of the juice in, in the cold. But uh, jumper cables, that's uh, a really, really useful uh, thing to bring. Also, a towing rope of so some kind is uh, uh, it's important. If you get stuck and you need help to be pulled out of somewhere from another car, you need some kind of rope to uh, attach between the cars. So a towing rope, that's a really good thing to, to bring. It can also be really helpful to, to bring some sand in the car. Uh, some kind of uh, this you use for uh, the litter box for uh, for kittens can do. You can also bring some uh, sand that you buy that's uh, mixed with salt, maybe some uh, seashell that's uh, more specific to put on uh, on ice. But uh, whatever kind of uh, of uh, sand you you get, it's really handy when you need it. Also, this. Uh, uh, oil or silicone uh, based uh, lubricants for uh, for uh, this uh, seals uh, rubber seals around your windows and uh, doors it's really good to to bring with you in the car also this uh, uh, defrost uh, lubricant to uh, open uh, frozen locks it's also a good thing to, to bring with you. Uh, this list, I think, contains the, the, the stuff that uh, most common people will uh, uh, benefit from bringing. Of course, if you're traveling uh, uh, to some uh, wilderness uh, adventure, you bring a lot of other kit. Uh, in your uh, backpack or your, together with your camping gear and that can also come in really really handy uh, I know that some other people bring some uh, always some kind of uh, survival kit items in the car but uh, if you want to look into that I think there's uh, a whole lot of other videos on, uh, on the internet that can uh, explain uh, what kind of uh, stuff to bring To end this uh, video, I want to mention maybe the most important thing of all, and that is that uh, you need experience to travel safe in, uh, in the winter conditions. You can't read a book, watch a video, uh, talk to someone. You have to do it over and over again and get the experience. Uh, it's the only way to learn this stuff. I hope this video has been uh, been helpful and uh, given you some pointers. And uh, I think I should just leave it at that. So thank you so much for watching and I hope to be able to make some more videos pretty soon.